Okay, so we're going to spend a bit of time making things just a little more organized, not super organized, but um, like I said in the last video, we're now at over 300 lines in our main and our only .c file. So we're going to split things up a bit. Uh, we're going to create a folder called source, and we're going to put all our .c files in there. Then we are going to create a new folder and we're going to call this one include. And I think for now that's all we need. We might change that in a little bit, but for now that's that's all we really need. Okay, so in uh, Sublime, let's create a new file. This is going to be our make file. So let's save it and just call it make file. Okay, so a make file just allows us to compile a bunch of different things uh, with one command, one easy command. Um, we're not going to go super complicated at the start, but we might eventually kind of move towards that. So we'll we'll, we'll set up the groundwork for some uh, for some more complicated stuff. So in in a, a make file, you can declare variables. So I've just declared a variable called cc, and we're just going to call that gcc. So gcc is our compiler. Uh, this is just like standard makefile stuff. And then c flags. So these are going to be any arguments that we have. Uh, for now, just dash l and curses. Remember, we've been typing that every time we compile. Um, source directory equals, remember this is that uh, folder that we just created. And then sources equals, and what we're going to do for here is we're going to use the dollar sign. So this means it's going to be a variable. A variable is going to be source directory, which we just declared. And then star Dot C. So what this is going to do is any file that we put into here is now equal to sources. That's just what the star means. It means anything. Like uh, we could change this name to rogue.c. We could add 10 new files. It's just any file that matches this, which happens to be any file that ends with dot C. So any file that we put in here that ends with dot C matches this. That's all that means. Um, okay, and then so for make files, they have what's called targets. So you have an all target. And then you have dependencies, and then you have you can add more targets. So we're going to add another target here called rogue. So all will point to rogue. And then we're going to put in that variable.cc. So that's just GCC. We could have just typed GCC, it'd be the same thing. And then our dollar sources, our dollar C flags, we're gonna do dash O. Okay, so this means our output file name is going to be what follows. We're gonna put dollar at. This just means, uh, sorry, this should be, there. Okay, so make sure this is a tab, not four spaces, but a tab. That needs to be a tab, okay? That's uh, just make, make syntax. So this target points to these. When you call make rogue, this line will execute. Um, so let's just save this and see kind of if that's working. Um, so make rogue. Um, sorry, let's clear this. Try that again. Okay, so here, you can see that this, this line here turns into this. Now I've added a semicolon here, which you don't want a semicolon. Um, okay, so let's just uh, clear that, run it again. 
Okay. Now if we hit dir, we can see that file showed up here. Um, let's just let's delete both of these. Okay, so we only have these these two folders and this file in here. If we rerun this, make rogue, and then we refresh, this rogue shows up. So what we're also going to do is we're going to do make run, sorry, just a new target run, and then this will just run our program. So if we now type in make run instead of make rogue, it runs. That's kind of how make files work. Um, okay. So now, now I want to spend some time splitting this actual file up. So we're going to create a header file. So we'll open up a new new file in there. Let's save this. We're going to put it in our include directory that we created. We're going to call it rogue.h. Save that. Okay, so now we're going to basically everything from above our main, everything above our main is going to go in there. So just copy that. Uh, no, actually, so here I'm editing the wrong, wrong.c file. Okay, so we have to edit this one. So let's delete that. Yeah, we want to edit the. We don't want two main dot C's going on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So everything above main. Goes into here. So our dot h, it's just basically our definitions, our type def uh, definitions, our function declarations, um, and any include statements. Okay, so save that, and then replace in main.c, we can just delete all that, and then just add an include, and call that rogue.h. So include rogue.h. Okay, so what this include, we used these include uh, statements before, but what that just does is it copies, it finds this file, so it'll find rogue.h, once we tell it where it is, uh, it will find it, and it will just copy and paste every single piece of code um, from here into this file. So it's, it's like main.c is gonna look exactly the same, except we've just kind of split the files up, but uh, to the compiler, or whatever it will uh it will all look the same because it just copies and pastes all this code into main.c <clears throat> okay so there's one thing but now when we run our make file it won't work so just um delete this and hit make so now we're getting all these errors so we need to modify our make file. We're going to add another directory here. So we're going to call it idir for include directory. And it's going to equal dot slash include slash. Then in our C flags, we're going to add a dash I dollar sign it means we're gonna put a variable in here and that's gonna be I dir. So what this does is this says this dash I tells C to include this include folder. Okay? So now when we run it, let's clear it, hit make, and it works perfectly fine. Because now it knows to look in this include folder for this rogue.h. So we're just telling C where to find different files. Okay, so we'll just keep splitting uh, our main folder up. What we kind of want to do is we're going to want 
I'm almost thinking of it like a file per struct. So for player, we're going to want a player.c. We're going to want a room.c. Maybe not a position.c, at least not to start, but definitely a player and a room.c. So that's how we'll, we'll just do it. So new file, and then this will go in our source folder because it's going to be a .c file. So player.c. Save that. And then we can just copy and paste any player functions. So like uh, player setup, player handle, check position, player move, all those guys. We'll just put them in there for now. So copy them and cut them out. Okay, now since this file is also using like structs that were defined in here and functions that were defined in our rogue.h, we also need to include it in here. So include rogue.h. Okay, but now we're gonna run into a problem. This main.c is including rogue.h, and so is this. So what happens is all this code ends up in player.c, and all this code ends up in main.c. So you're gonna have multiple declarations of these functions. This check position function is going to be declared in player.c and in main.c. So what we're going to do is at the top of our rogue.h we're going to add an if and def. If not defined and then we're going to put rogue underscore h and here we're going to put define rogue underscore h. So what's going to happen is when it gets to this line of code, it's going to say, is rogue underscore h defined? And if it's not, the first time that's included, it won't be, it will go to this next line and define rogue underscore h. It's like a compiler thing. I don't really understand it. I can't give you all the details, but basically it's like, is do we recognize this name? No? Okay, well then our next step is to define it. Okay? And then down here we say pound and if. Okay, so that's, let's say, let's say player.c calls it first, okay? So it asks, is this defined? No, okay, we define it. Okay, then main.c tries, tries to include this. And it's, again, it's an if statement. It says, is this defined? Well, player.c has defined it. So then it just skips this entire, <clears throat> it just skips this entire if statement. I um, hope that makes sense. That's the best way I can explain it. Um, okay, so we've got that done. And then one more, control N. And we're going to call this one room.c. So any room functions. So just create room down, basically. Oops. Okay, copy those, cut them out, and then paste them into here. And again, this also needs to have our include rogue.h statement. And again, it'll do the same thing where it checks the if statement to see if it's already been included. It won't include it twice. And uh, we can cut these out. We're not going to use them anymore. Okay, so our main.c is now down to under 60 lines. So that's a little better. We could probably even cut that down, cut some more white space out, but don't worry about it. Or you can if you want, really, it doesn't, doesn't bother me. Okay, so we've added these two new files to our source. Now remember in our make file, we have kind of already uh, We've accounted for that because instead of putting like here main.c, oops, main.c as our sources, we put this star. So it just says anything in here we're gonna include. So let's uh, let's actually see that. We're gonna just hit um, hit make. So what happens is, um, 
it compiled and then make run should work yep okay so we've got things cleaned up fairly well now the one thing one more thing I want to do is this is our executable that gets uh, produced when we run our make file basically it's going to check and see if that um, it's going to check and see if this rogue executable exists if it does it's not going to execute these um, it's not going to execute this line here so right now we've already created this executable what happens if we go and we just mess up our, our C code? Like, so let's just mess it up. Like, okay, it, sh it shouldn't, nothing should happen, right? And then when we go into our terminal and we hit make, it says nothing to be done for all. So basically we call this all right here. It says, okay, I need to find this rogue thing. Does it exist? Yes, it exists. Therefore, I don't need to do anything. So basically, as long as this file here exists, we'll never compile the changes that we make, if that makes sense. So we have to go and we have to manually delete it right now. Um, and that, sometimes you'll just forget to do that and then you'll be coding away and something won't work and you'll be like, why isn't it working? And it's just the problem is it's not recompiling. Okay, so now, okay, now it's picking up that error. So again, if I just added this and then run make, Basically, I wouldn't have realized I had made that coding error. Okay, so how we're going to fix that particular problem is we're just going to add a clean call here. Clean. And we're going to hit rm rogue. And this just says remove rogue. So let's, uh, let's test that. Um, no, we first have to make it. Okay, now I'll try and make clean. And it worked. I'll show you that again. So I'll make it. So this rogue file gets created and then when we run make clean, it deletes it. Okay, now we're not always gonna remember to run make clean. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hit put clean in as a target. So now when we just run make, um, Sorry, what we're going to do is we're going to do rogue clean run clean. Ah, there's a, there's a better way to do this, but it got confusing with end curses. So, okay, let's just try this. Make, so we run it. Okay, so basically we're going to compile it, we're going to run it, and then we're going to delete it. So that's how our make file is going to work. If you just want to do one fun one of these calls, you can just do like make rogue or make run or make clean and it will skip this all. But for now, we'll just do all three at once at, at the same time, basically. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Make files are very confusing and I didn't really do a, I'm, this isn't a make file tutorial by any means, but just you can type along. If you have any questions, Feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer.